Hi, East Hampton families. This is Christina Howard, the school psychologist at Center Pepin. I am today going to read a book called Crickwing. It is written and illustrated by Janelle Cannon and published by Voyager Books. They've got some great pictures in this book. Far below the great forest canopy lies a shadowy world that many insects call home. Among the damp clutter of fallen leaves and branches, leaf-cutting ants toil all day while large cockroaches await their evening search for food. One cockroach had looked like all the others until a close call with a hungry toad. In his wild escape from the toad's sticky tongue, he had twisted one of his fine, long wings. Since then, everyone called him Crickwing. Crickwing despised his nickname, and he avoided hearing it by staying far away from the other creatures. He would sneak out to find his food when the night was darkest, knowing that the forest was crawling with predators even worse than ravenous toads. The forest seemed much less fearsome whenever Crick Crickwing found a nice pile of tasty leaves, roots, and petals. He took comfort in their bright colors. That's my dog, by the way. He took comfort in their bright colors and interesting shapes, and he often built sculptures from them before he ate them. When he was busy playing with his food, he could almost forget the pain in his crooked wing. One night, Crickwing created his most wonderful sculpture ever. He was so absorbed in his work that he didn't hear the soft footsteps behind him. So here is a picture of him creeping out at night to um, look for food. And this one is of him playing with his food. What do you think he's making there? Maybe a mouse? Pow! Swoosh! A sharp-eyed monkey clobbered Crickwing and swiped his sculpture. Crickwing dived for cover. I only let him get away with that because he's so big, he grumbled, cowering under a rotten log. Oh no, poor Crickwing. He's having a lot of awful luck. Remember, any time that something doesn't go to plan, that is a problem. So really, he's been having lots of different problems. Crickwing hid until the next night when hunger drove him out to search for a meal. But as soon as he had f added the final flower petal to his dinner, an enormous scaled lizard nearly gulped him down. Crickwing dodged and the lizard took off with his edible artwork. Another masterpiece ruined, Crickwing panted. I'm starving and my wing aches. I don't know if I can take this much longer. You can see from this picture that things are just getting worse for poor Crickwing. This is the big lizard that stole his dinner and this is the lizard again just tossing him the next night things got even worse an ocelot pounced and nearly crushed Crickwing. Crickwing. when he darted away the ocelot scooped him up in her massive paw and threw him high into the air Oh no, Crickwing wailed, not again. When he landed, Crickwing scrambled about in a panic and leapt into a crevice under a stone where he collapsed in angry tears. I'm so tired of having to run, run, run from giant predators, he seethed. I hate being so small, and I hate never being able to finish a meal. I'm a mere exoskeleton. Through the long night, Crickwing's wing throbbed as he waited in his hideout. Look at those eyes. I would not be able to sleep with those eyes looking at me. Poor Crickwing. Many hours later, sunlight streamed into his cave, 
and the leaf-cutting ants began another busy day. Thousands of the tiny workers carried large slices of leaves back to their colony. Crickwing, groggy and still angry, crept out for a better look. Ha! These guys are even punier, punier than I am, he muttered. None of the ants seemed to notice him. So you can see Crickwing right here, and he is much bigger than those ants. Just like those other animals and creatures that picked on Crickwing were much bigger than him. What do you think is going to happen next? Do you think that Crickwing is going to try strategies to help him feel better? Or do you think that maybe he's just going to make his problems a little bit worse? Hmm. Let's find out. Crickwing inched closer. There's something about these eensy critters that just bugs me. Why isn't anyone bothering these little twerps? He placed a spiny leg across the leaf cutter path. Well, let's see what happens now, he chortled. Have a nice trip. See you next fall. Aw, oh, Crickwing. That's not very nice. That's red zone behavior. Mean. Several ants stumbled, but then went back to work as if Crickwing weren't even there. This will get their attention, he growled, picking up a leaf from the path. The ant carrying the leaf hung on tight, which gave Crickwing a dastardly idea. He hung several ants from a vine one by one and watched with glee as their tiny legs flailed. Crickwing laughed so hard that he nearly forgot his aching wing. That night, Crickwing wolfed down a sweet flower bud, not even noticing its dazzling purple color. He had work to do. So you can see that instead of continuing to try to find things that make him happy, like um, decorating his food and building sculptures, he instead kind of went the other direction and, and is getting a little bit of pleasure and happiness from not being so nice to others. Right in the middle of the leaf cutter trail, he dug a deep hole in the ground. Then he crouched behind a rock waiting to see what the ants would do. In the very early dawn, the ants rose as usual and went to work. When they returned, their cargo clamped in their jaws, they could barely see their way. They plummeted into the trap, piling into a green, great green heap. These muddling molecules are so easy to fool, snorted Crickwing. Ugh. He's being so unkind. Back in the leafcutter colony, the queen of the ants called a meeting. This week's production is down, she barked. What on earth is going on? It's a cockroach, your highness, stammered Tara. He's picking on us, added Gravel. No cockroach meddles with our colony. Seize him, ordered the queen. Hi. I'm going to cut in here because apparently YouTube only allows for 15-minute videos, and this is a long story. So if you want to hear the rest of the story, Go to part two and you will find out what happens at the end. Thanks. Bye-bye.